Hi and welcome to Coffee with My Sunshine. Today I am bringing you a part two of my favorite scrap wood projects and ideas that we've done on my channel so far. If you're looking for part one, I will have that linked below. So let's get started with project number one. The pieces that I used for this tier tray are a few items that I picked up from Habitat for Humanity. I picked up two different types of cabinet doors and two spindle type things from um, beds or headboards. First, you want to start by marking where you want to make the cuts, depending on how high you want your tiered tray and how, um, how much room you want in between each tier. And for this piece that I'm showing you here, I forgot to hit record, but I did cut that along with uh, a center piece of the spindle and I'm going to end up gluing them together um, to make the very top piece of the tray but I realized after I did that, that the, that the cute little topper was a little bit bigger than the middle piece that I cut for it to go on top of. So I'm going to use our sander to make it nice and flat and then also take down some of the um, edges to make it fit with that center piece. And this is actually one of my favorite tools to use. It is really fun and it makes sanding go by so fast. <laughs> it's actually not working right now, so I have to get it fixed. Next we are going to take some more of the spindle and cut it down for the center and the bottom of the tiered tray. Then we are taking the cabinet doors and cutting them down to size. And I'm not giving measurements because it all depends on what size tiered tray you want and what size cabinet doors you are using. And I thought I would go ahead and glue that top piece together so it has time to dry and then we clamped it. We just used some regular wood glue and that usually holds really, really well. And then you're going to want to let that dry for quite a while. As that was drying, we went ahead and cut the rest of the spindles and the smaller cabinet door for the top of the tiered tray. And because the cabinet doors both had holes from the handles in them, I'm just taking some of this wood putty and filling them in. And you're going to want to use more putty than you think you'll need because as this stuff dries, it really shrinks. And these are those little bottom pieces that we used from this that we cut from the spindle and I'm going to use those as little legs for the tiered tray. And here's the wood putty after it is dried. I'm just picking at it to make sure that it's good to go and then I went ahead and used a paint scraper to scrape off the big chunks of it and then gave it a good sanding and this stuff is super easy to sand. Then for mine, I'm just using some of this Waverly white chalk paint and giving both the cabinet doors two coats and you can use whatever you want. You can use whatever color, you can use acrylic paint, spray paint, doesn't matter. It's just what I had on hand. So as those are drying, I'm just taking some of this 220 grit sandpaper and sanding down all the pieces just to make sure they have a nice smooth edge. And I'm using two different stains because I wanted like a coastal or driftwood um, color. 
So for this I'm using the Natural Stain by Minwax and the Weathered Gray by Rust-Oleum. And make sure you use gloves or you will have stained fingers for days. And I started by putting the Natural Stain down first. And these wood pieces are ones that my husband cut for me for the edges of the tray. I wasn't sure at first that I wanted edges, but I thought it would look better. So he went ahead and cut those for me and we did not film that, I forgot. So I went ahead and stained everything. And I did not wipe off the natural stain before I put down the weathered gray. I just layered it right over top and it was, th it was still wet, so, <laughs> and it seemed to work fine. And then I just let those pieces dry overnight and then we went ahead and, and attached the edges with a little bit of wood glue and these tiny nails. And I'm glad I went with um, these edge pieces. I think it just kind of finishes it off a little bit better. And then you're going to want to mark the center of your tiered pieces by drawing an X and going from each corner just to find the center piece. And then you're going to want to do the same thing for the spindles that go in the center. We decided to pre-drill just so it was easier for the screws to go in so it didn't like crack any of the wood pieces. I will have all the tools listed in my description box if you guys are interested. And this screwdriver makes it so much easier. So here we pre-drilled and then put the screw in part way just so we could um, screw on that center piece of the spindle. And then went ahead and screwed it on, screwed the screw in the rest of the way. And then same with the next layer and then just put that on top of the spindle. And then for the bottom little round pieces, I just put a little bit of wood glue on them and set the tray right on top and adjusted the feet so that I liked the placement. And then for the top piece, since it doesn't need to be like super strong, we just use some wood glue to attach it. And that was it. It was actually like a really fun project. I hope you guys enjoyed it and please let me know if you guys are going to make one of your own. These tiered trays can be so expensive in the stores and online and this one the spindles only cost me two dollars a piece and the cabinet doors only cost only cost me two dollars a piece as well so it was super super affordable and really fun to make. So if you are new to my channel, I would love for you to subscribe and join our YouTube family and let me know what your favorite type of DIY and decor style is. On to project number two. So for my project, I wanted to build a planter for my back porch and we're going to be using this barn wood that is from my parents property. And we are going to start by cutting the boards down to size and because this board is a little bit bigger. We had to um, make a cut and then flip the board and then finish the cut on the other side. And 
if you're interested in building one of these, I will have the measurements listed in my description box. I actually got the look of this planner, like the idea of it from, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Ashley from uh, Till Vacuum Do Us Part. She has a really fun cleaning channel, um, but they built one of these planters, or two of these planters actually, um, very similar to this one. Our sizes were a little bit different than she had on her planters because, you know, we had to make it to fit our area. <laughs> so after we cut the boards to size, we just pre-drilled holes so that we could um, countersink the screws because on the corners here we're going to be putting um, kind of like edge piece pieces on the corners so we wanted them to lay flat when we screw those in. And for these we just did two screws for each board. So some of this my husband helped me with because the screws weren't going in as easy as I wanted them to. <laughs> and I totally forgot when I was sanding the outside coming up shortly, I forgot to sand the inside. So I will be doing that later. And here it is all stacked up. We haven't put it together yet, um, but this is what I was showing you. Like the edge pieces are kind of staggered or alternated. So because I knew I was going to stain it, I wanted to just give it a light sanding because we liked the, <laughs> there's a bunch of dust in there, <laughs> um, because we liked the um, rough sawn look of it and you know, just the imperfections, but I wanted to sand it down just a little bit to um, get it so that it would take some of the stain. And I think it's really pretty wood. That's why I like using it. We have a whole bunch of it, so we have a lot of projects that we're going to have to make. <laughs> so my husband took over sanding while I finished cutting the edge pieces because we were running out of daylight and wanted to get this project done today. So these are those edge pieces that I was talking about that um, the reason why we had to countersink those screws but these ones I kind of wanted the screws to um, stick out just a little bit because I thought it just kind of added to the rusticness of it. And we used um, two different types of wood. I think we I think we used um, cedar on the edge pieces so and we flipped them over so that they were on the rougher side. I didn't realize that until we were halfway done. So I'm just giving them a light sanding as well. And which I should have done before I put the screws in, but that's okay. I'm just going to be using this fruit wood stain. I had a lighter stain, but I couldn't find it. Um, I should have waited until I got a place to order for some um, the exact stain that I wanted because it didn't really turn out the color that I was hoping for. But with everything being shut down um, and not being able to go to the stores like normal, I just I was super excited to get this project finished. So I just, I normally just use a sock to apply stain. I just think it goes on better. And after I applied the fruit wood stain, it looked really, really orange to me. Like I said, I wanted it to be like a lighter, more natural stain. So I thought, okay, maybe if I layered some dark walnut on top, it would take down some of the orange but still give it like that um, rustic wood look and it just turned out a little bit darker than I was hoping for so I don't know if you guys have any tips on how to I don't know apply a lighter stain over a darker stain I don't even know if that's possible to lighten it up but anyway I am happy with how it turned out I think it's really pretty and it will work great when I can get some flowers <laughs> like I said everything's closed down so um, I can't really get out to the stores to to get the flowers that I want plus it's a little bit early to plant them anyway but it's ready for when I can get them so 
just so you get the effect I wanted to show you what um, flowers would look like in there We are still using this box today, but I have blueberries growing in them on our porch. Project number three. This first thrifted find I found at Habitat for Humanity, I think it was last weekend, and I thought it was just really unique with that um, metal insert piece. So now that I got it good and scrubbed, even though it doesn't look like it, um, I'm going to first paint it, paint the outside frame. Um, it's a mixture of that um, blue fin chalk paint color that I really like. I've showed you in a couple projects before. If I'm wrong on the name, I'll, I'll insert it in the clip. And I also mixed it with a little bit of um, sea salt, and I think that's by Sherwin-Williams. I'm going to leave the brackets on here because I think they look kind of cool and I should have taped them off but I'm using this brush I've shown you guys before it kind of has like a tip on it so it's easier to get in those little cracks and crevices. I'm not going to paint this the blue I'm going to paint this white. So basically this is what I want it to look like in the end, but I have to go to the hardware store and get some um, some sort of like support brackets, I think, because I don't think just putting screws in here would be enough. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like this kind of content and if you like what you're seeing. Project number four. So for this one, it's really simple. I will put the sizes up in the corner and in my description box, but all you'll need are some Dollar Tree frames. I have these five by seven ones, and I was going for more of like a modern, a little bit glitzy look, so I went with the black and silver. But with the frames, they might say five by seven, but it doesn't mean the actual frame size is five by seven. So I'm showing you the size that mine is, so that my top and bottom measurements will fit your frames. If you go with different size frames, you'll want to adjust the top and bottom sizes. You will also need these. These are going to be like pillars. You could also use the square dowel rods. Those would be really easy. These my husband cut for me. This is the bottom. It's just square. And the top just super simple. You could use square ones. You don't need this fancy little edge, but um, I wanted to change it up a little bit different than the um, white one that I've done before. I'll show you a picture of that in the corner if you haven't seen it. But these are, you could get um, blocks like this or um, wood, you know, wood squares like this at Hobby Lobby or Michaels. They'll just be dif different sizes if you can't cut them yourself. And I believe Home Depot could make some cuts for you as well. You'll also need a topper. I used that from a... Um, spindle you'll need some wood glue hot glue and a ruler and this i am just showing you the cuts that my husband made for me i love when he can help me out i can definitely use power tools myself but um i think he has more fun doing it well i'm not sure if that's true <laughs> i love using power tools too but um i don't know i think he enjoys helping as much as i like him helping me out on these projects so he's doing the two top pieces. And then cutting the pillars for me. Like I said, I will have sizes and angles and stuff in the description box if you guys are interested.
but these little pillar things were my husband's idea and I love how it turned out so I'm gl so glad he suggested them <laughs> and then these little pieces are going to be the feet not necessary either <laughs> And then this is the little spindle thing. I've used this piece for so many projects, like um, a tiered tray. I think I used it for a little soap tray, but I'm cutting off another little piece for the top of this lantern. And then I'm just taking the pieces um, that he cut for me and sanding them really well. This one we did, we cut upside down on accident. We should have done it on the nice smooth side, but that's okay. <laughs> Nothing a little sanding won't help. Then you want to measure to make sure that top piece is centered onto the other top piece. And then I just um, marked it so that when I took it off to put the wood glue on and put it back down, I would put it in the same spot. <laughs> So then I'm taking a little bit of that wood glue and coating it pretty good and also hot glue to hold it in place while the wood glue dries. And then normally I would clamp it, but I was having such a hard time with these clamps. I just, I guess, didn't have enough strength in my hand to open them up. So I just put something heavy on top of it and that'll just... That'll work just fine. So then I'm taking the frames and I'm pulling the back piece out and the glass. And I'm also removing these tabs because you will see them, if, if they're folded down, you're gonna see them when the lantern's all put together. So you don't want that. <laughs> And then you can use some Gorilla Glue. I'm sure a high heat hot glue gun would work just fine to hold the mirror, or I'm sorry, the glass in. I believe that's what I used last time. I can't remember. And that one has held up great. But I used both and then set the glass back in lightly. I didn't want to push too hard because I didn't want the glue to like gush out. And then I just went ahead and did that to all four frames. And then here is where you're taking those little pillar pieces. Like I said, you could use the square dowel rods if you didn't have um, a way to cut them. And then same here, I'm using some of the wood glue and hot glue. And I am I laid the frame flat, like facing up flat on a flat surface, and then also did the same with the pillars. That way there's this little gap or not gap, it's a, the little raised edge in front of the frame. I just thought that would look prettier. And then I did that on both, on two sides. I can't talk tonight, <laughs> I'm sorry. and then let th those dry pretty good. And then um, after those were dry, I attached the other two frames to it. And you wanna make sure the frame that you're attaching to that little pillar piece um, is on the inside of the pillar piece, just like you did with the other frame, if that makes sense. You'll be able to tell just by watching. And then you let those dry and then you attach the other frame in the same way. And you'll probably have to pull on the frames a little bit um, just to make sure that they line up evenly. And I think it's already super pretty. I like the um, rustic modern look to it. 
So then taking the bottom, I'm going to set the base on the top so that I can measure it out and um, mark it just like I did for the top piece. And then in the same way, just taking some of the wood glue and hot glue and putting it onto the bottom base piece. And then you're gonna wanna let that dry really well. And then while I was waiting, I just added that little spindle top piece to my topper. So then this is the lantern without the feet. I just went ahead and added a battery candle and this little um, greenery piece from the Dollar Tree. And that's what it looks like without the feet. And then here, I forgot actually to add them. My husband reminded me, so I'm adding them. And then here it is, all finished. I think it's super pretty. It can be used for any holiday, any season. I keep my other one up all year round. I just think they're great with little candles or little um, scenes in them and stuff. I will link, link my other two lanterns if you want to see those. I actually have this in my china cabinet right now. On to project number five. For this next one, I'm using a scrap wood, which I'm sure we all have as crafters, a piece of raffia, and a piece of burlap. And we're going to be making a little scarecrow head out of this scrap piece of wood. So what you want to do is measure your burlap, or eyeball it as I did, and cut it. This is going to be his little hat. And I did mine, like, I didn't do it in a straight line. I kind of cut it um, with little waves in it because I didn't want it to be straight across. And then I'm taking that scrap wood, and you want to attach the um, burlap really loose. See, like, how it's really loose there? Because you want it to look kind of messy when you're done. And then I just attached it with hot glue in some different spots. And then I'm taking this ribbon. And because it was a little bit thicker than I wanted, I didn't want to go out and get new. I just wanted to use stuff that I had. I just cut it in half and then attached it to his little hat. And hot glued it. So let me know how have you guys been. I know it's been a while since I've been on here. Um, how's everybody doing? How's everybody's family? And what kind of DIYs have you been up to? So can you see how like messy it is? It just, it looks like it's fraying and everything. That's kind of what I was going for. So I'm just attaching some of this raffia as his hair. Um, attaching it with a little bit of hot glue underneath the hat a little bit. And then you can give him a little haircut if it's too long. And then just scrunch 
the top part of the hat, which is going to be the top part of the wood piece, and then just tie it with some twine or whatever you have. Just tie it like super tight. You can even add a dab of glue there so that it holds. And then I just kind of frayed them a little bit. So after you're finished with his hat, just go ahead and draw on his little face. And I'm doing it in pencil first just because I don't trust myself with marker and, you know, can't erase marker on wood. <laughs> and this I also found um, the inspiration on Pinterest. I will link that in my description box as well. I think it was from an Etsy shop, so definitely check it out. And I couldn't find my black acrylic marker pen or marker, so um, I'm just using that fabric marker. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it'll be fine. It'll be inside, so I'm not worried about it getting rained on or anything. And don't forget, I don't ask a lot in my videos, but I've been reading a lot that um, if you hit the like button, if you like the video, obviously, <laughs> um, it actually helps my video and my channel um, do better. So if you like it, just give it a thumbs up. I would really, really appreciate it. And that would really help my channel. So isn't his face so cute? <laughs> I love that project. That's probably my second favorite. Let me know what you think of it. Project number six is going to need some pine cones. I got a couple bags at Hobby Lobby. You can get them at Michael's or any kind of craft store or your backyard, but my backyard doesn't have the type that I wanted. You're also going to need a craft foam cone or you could probably use like poster board and roll it up. Also some paint. I'm using this vintage white because I wanted it to still be like white-ish but I wanted it to be more cozy than like a super bright white. <laughs> I'm also going to be using some pine cones that I already had. I ended up using a lot more than I thought I would, so definitely get more than you think you'll need. For mine, I really wanted to water down that um, vintage white color because I wanted the pine cones to almost have like a bleached look to them. So I didn't really want them to have, all of them to have like a painted look. So while it's wet, it looks pretty like solid and um, white but then as it dries I'll show you here in a second it looks um, more faded some of them already had like the tips painted white which was fine because I wanted the difference but this is what it looks like after the paint has dried mixed with water but I wanted different um, you know different colors in there so it just gave the um, pine cone tree a little bit of dimension. You're also going to need these small pine cones and you will need a um, pole or dowel rod or a large branch maybe. Not large branch but a <laughs> large stick I guess. And also some scrapbook paper if you want. This is going to be used for the trunk and some Mod Podge. You could cut out a hole in the center of your cone or I got my son's help to um, drill out a hole. So thank you to my son for helping. <laughs> then you're gonna wanna take your dowel rod or pole and push it through the center of your cone. I cut mine, um, I don't even know what the length was, but what, however big you want your trunk to be. Then take your scrapbook paper if you're using it and cut it to the size that you will need for the trunk. And I'm using Mod Podge. You could use Elmer's glue or probably even a glue stick. And then I just wrapped it around. And then to seal in the scrapbook paper, I just added another layer of Mod Podge. And then after that was dry, I just started attaching the pine cones. I started with a, um, a large one on the top and just used some hot glue and pushed in that little stem into the foam. And you'll have to hold the pine cones, you know, for a few seconds just to make sure it adheres to the cone. 
And then I just kind of staggered the different sizes of pine cones all the way down um, the tree or the, um, the foam cone. And then you want to fill in the empty spots with your little mini pine cones. And for mine, you can go all the way around with the pine cones. For mine, I only did half of it because I want this to go on my fireplace and our little uh, mantle is very, very thin or narrow. So it wouldn't have fit if I did the pine cones all the way around. Then you wanna drill a hole into the center of your dowel for the screw. And here is where I'm taking my scrap wood. And also I guess the pole was scrap wood too because I used it in another project. <laughs> Um, I am also pre-drilling my scrap wood pieces that I cut for the base. And I'm just attaching a flathead screw to the top scrap wood piece and drilling that into the, the base and into the um, trunk of the tree. And I used two pieces of scrap wood only because I wanted it to be thick and chunky and also I didn't want the tree to fall over so I wanted it to have a little bit of weight. So I'm adding some wood glue and attaching the two pieces together. Then clamping them. And then just painted it roughly because I still wanted it to have like a rustic um, Kind of like vintage look and this is what it looks like all finished let me know what you think you could also paint the cone brown so that you didn't see any of the foam through the pine cones scrap wood project number seven this is one of the scrap boards i'm going to be using for the trees um, so basically all I'm going to do is measure the width of this and then find the center and then draw a triangle and then you'll see where we go from there. So I just marked the center of my board and then drew a straight line with the square. You can use anything that is straight. <laughs> I ended up using a board for one of them. And then you're just going to draw your tree. I just did a large triangle for this one. I ended up using a marker here in a minute so that you could see the lines a little bit better. And again, I apologize for the lighting in this room. Starting from here, I drew just a straight line across. I'm gonna do a short stubbier tree. Then once you have your triangles um, drawn to the size that you want, then you want to start putting in um, the, not the dividers, but the lines so that you know where you're going to be um, kind of making your branches. I did mine a little bit thicker on this one. All right, can you guys see those lines I drew? Hopefully. Um, I'm just going to take, you know, something straight. You can use whatever you have. And this is where I'm going to make the, the little, um, you know, where it makes it look like a tree. <laughs> I don't know what they're called. But I'm going to add those in so I know where to cut. You could also leave it like this. I'm going to leave a couple that are triangles. And then when we go to cut it, you cut along these lines. You don't want to cut on here because then you'll separate your tree. Um, but those will sand off easily. If you're doing it, probably just um, use pencil. But I wanted you guys to be able to see what I was doing. And then this one, I'm just going to use just the triangle shape. And I'm going to make a couple other ones. And then we'll start cutting. thought this one was really cool I'm not gonna stain this one but I like how it's like really like weathered and then it's like lighter at the top so I'm gonna keep this one this color 
And I use three different saws for this. You could also use a hand saw for, um, you know, these simpler cuts. This one was a little bit harder for me until I realized I cut better with this saw with my left hand, which is really strange because I'm right-handed. <laughs> but I'm not a huge fan of these types of saws. They kind of freak me out. But I had to use it and get used to it because my husband was out of town. So, <laughs> so it was a learning experience, but a lot easier than I had made it out to be in my head. <laughs> And then I just took a sanding block just to knock off some of the, um, you know, splintered pieces and to um, round off the edges just a little bit. Don't worry, like these, you know, obviously I screwed up on the cuts, but it kind of makes it look cool and gives it a little bit of character. Then because I'm going to be putting it on my, um, my fireplace, I wanted to just add a little bit of color to these. So I am mixing some black and blue and this is going, the smaller triangle is going to be like a darker navy blue color. And I just took a sponge just kind of to smear it out because I didn't want it to be solid. I ended up going over it again with a um, sanding black just to rough it up a little bit. And then for the next one, I just took some of that um, vintage white and mixed it with water and added it to the gray um, triangle tree. And I thought that one turned out really pretty and weathered. And then I'm just taking some of this poly shade stain and giving this one a little bit of a darker um, look. I didn't want to go over and cover the wood. I just wanted it to stand out a little bit. And then I'm taking some of this green, did the same thing, watered it down, and did two coats. And then here is where I just took the sanding block just to rough them all up a little bit and make them look a little bit worn. So let me know what you guys think of this one. I hope you give them a try because they are so cute and you can make them however you want. You can customize the size, color, shape. It's just really fun. Let me know if you're still with me by putting a smiley face emoji in the comment section. Project number eight. So this is the jewelry holder that I was telling you about. I'm just using some scrap wood that my husband had in the garage and I'm just going to cut it down to size. You're gonna need two pieces. I measured mine out to be about 20 inches just because our closet isn't huge and that's where I'm going to hang it eventually once um, my husband finishes um, you know, building some shelves and stuff in our closet. Then I'm just going to take my little handy dandy saw here <laughs> and cut it. This is the first time I'm using it. I'm so excited because you know, I've always wanted a saw that I could just use in my craft room and not have to get everything, all my husband's tools out and stuff. So I will link this in my description box if you're interested. Super easy to use and not too horribly messy. <laughs> so I just went ahead and cut both pieces. And this is going to be the top and the back part of the jewelry holder. And this is really like rough wood. It's nothing special. It's not like a pretty wood. So I'm just going to paint it when I'm done here. So here I'm just deciding how I want the shelf to be. And you need some sort of support. So I'm just going to take another chunk of that wood and um, cut it so that it makes kind of like a triangle. And that's going to be your little support on both sides. After that, I just gave the little shelves a quick sanding. I know this actually goes on a sander, but it's the only piece I had in my drawers here. <laughs> so here are the little triangle pieces. Those are going to be your support or your braces for the sides. And I'm just using some wood glue. This is one of my favorite kinds to use. It works really well and it's paintable. 
And with this shelf being so light and if you're not going to put anything heavy on it, all you need is the wood glue. I guess you could use um, little nails or brads if you wanted, but I just used the glue and then clamped it together. Overnight, I let it dry so it was nice and secure. And then I secured the little braces the same way. Just put a little bit of wood glue on there and clamped it down as good as I could because, you know, it was such a weird angle. The clamps have a hard time holding. I thought about taping it, but the clamps seem to hold um, just fine. And then the next day I took off the clamps and it was nice and tight and secure. And then I am using this green paint. I just think it's so pretty. I'm loving greens right now. It's got like a cottagey feel to it and it's kind of cozy. So I thought it would be perfect. And all I needed was one good coat. Let me know what kind of colors you guys are into right now. Are you guys into like the cottage style that's kind of going around? Or um, are you into the farmhouse? Are you into modern? Let me know if you're new here and if you haven't told me before. Let me know what kind of um, decor you have in your house. So then to hang the jewelry, I got these little hooks from my local hardware store. I got two different sizes. I I'm going to use the small ones for um, the necklaces hanging off of the bottom and then the larger ones for my hoop earrings because I have some really large hoop earrings <laughs> so I need um, you know the bigger ho uh, hooks for those. And these do get a little bit hard to screw in once you get um, them closer to being tight all the way <laughs> so I just used my pliers to um, finish screwing them in and then here it is all finished I think it's perfect it can hold my sunglasses all of my jewelry I can put little bowls up there for my rings and my little um, stud earrings and also a little flower This was actually an idea that one of my subscriber friends gave me. She asked if I could do some sort of um, jewelry or necklace organizer. So I hope this helps give you a little bit of an idea and I hope it's fun for you to do. Project number nine. Also, I have a home channel. That's where um, this video is from. I'm not very good at posting on that channel yet. I want to get better, but I will have that linked in the description box if you want to check it out. And this is what we're using for the little support pieces. You can just um, measure and do like one long strip along the back and then two on the sides if you want. We're just doing little pieces. Because actually we're going to be using some of this wood for a DIY on my other channel. And these don't have to be pretty. So then here I'm just pre-drilling holes into the little support pieces so that we can screw them into the wall. And that's what my husband's doing here. He just um, was using the level to make sure, um, obviously, the shelves sit level. And this is probably the easiest home DIY little renovation that you can do. And it will help so much just to keep you more organized and um, less cluttered feeling, I guess. So these are the boards we're using um, I don't know if you guys remember if you're um, part of my other channel, but these boards are from um, this horse barn that was on my mom and dad's property and we just took it apart and kept all the wood for projects like this. 
and I think it looks cool because it's already distressed <laughs> and rustic looking. So there my husband, because it was such a tight fit, all he had to do was push it into place and they are not going anywhere. So here he's doing um, the second shelf. I, I don't know if you can tell how snug that is and I just think it looks super cool but like I said those little support pieces are going to have to be painted they're sticking out like that on one side because that's where the studs were but once you paint them the same color as the wall you're not going to see it and so I just loaded up our shoes and then put our coats back Project number 10. This was actually in a video where I was working on this vase. It's a glass vase that I was doing to look like a birch log. And because it worked better than I thought it would, I was really curious how it would look on a regular piece of wood. So this wasn't originally going to be part of the video. I just, I was experimenting and kind of wanted you guys to see what it looked like when I was done. So I just took a regular log that we had by our fireplace and stripped off the bark that was on there. It's not a birch log. And I just went over some of the raised spots and made them darker, just like on the birch logs. And because this already has the brown, um, brown color on the log itself, you don't need to put that first layer down. So I'm just going straight to the glue after that, the, um, the black spots had dried. And I'm doing it kind of heavy, as you can see. And like I said, this is all an experiment. I don't even know, I didn't even know if it was gonna work, but I thought it would be fun anyway. So same as with the glass jar, you don't want the glue to dry, maybe one or two minutes in between um, putting the glue on and the paint. And then you mix up the paint that you want and go from, you don't wanna go long ways with your paintbrush. You wanna go, um, you know, kind of like you would see a birch log, like those lines go um, back and forth. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> it makes sense to me because I know what I'm thinking, but <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm just babbling and I make no sense at all. But anyway, you put a thick layer of the um, creamy colored paint on and let it dry. And I think it actually looks like a birch log. I'm so excited. Now I don't know um, how this holds up, like I said, this is all an experiment. I don't know if it chips off or flakes off, but I thought it'd be kind of cool if you don't, if you can't get your hands on real birch. I thought it'd be cool to do your own. And that's about it. Let me know if you guys like longer videos with more DIYs or shorter videos with just a couple DIYs. Project number 11. This is my inspiration piece from Pottery Barn. It was $159. I just loved how huge it was and that it was a two-toned cutting board. So for mine, you don't, don't need the remote, <laughs> but you're going to need some wood glue, something to cut the wood. I'm using um, my hand miter saw here and I'll be using some um, power tools. You will need a measuring tape, you will need a couple pieces of wood that you can cut down. I will show you the sizes here in a second. This one is three quarters by one and a half by eight. And these were very cheap at Home Depot. The next size is a one by four by eight. Also very affordable. Um, now they aren't like an oak or a maple. This is kind of my tester piece, so that's why I went with the cheaper wood to start with, and they were just a few dollars compared to the $159 cutting board. <laughs> but for the first one, you're going to use the thicker pieces of wood, and I am cutting mine at 24 inches, and this is going to be the base length of your cutting board, not including the handle. So 
So you will need four of those 24 inch pieces or whatever size you choose. I just chose that size because it um, equaled out to the eight foot length. So that was just easier for me. You can have it as long or as short as you want. Now this is just kind of a dry run here. This, we're taking the thinner piece of wood and this is going to be our handle. So this is all in, um, you know, what you want. But you want to kind of gauge it by like handle size, like, you know, just play around with it, see how long you want it. I ended up going with 30 inches, not the handle part, but the, that whole um, thin strip is 30 inches. And I was just double checking, making sure, you know, it's a good fit for my hand. And then I went ahead and cut that strip. Then you want to take your thicker pieces of wood and your thin handle piece and you're going to assemble it. So you want two of the thicker pieces on either side of the handle. And this does look a little bit boxy and chunky right now, but we're going to be adding some length to it here in a couple minutes. But first you want to attach your pieces of wood. I'm using wood glue and this is my favorite. I also got some clamps. I think this big bag of clamps was like $8.99 and it's a 22 piece. I got that at Home Depot. Turned out I needed some really long clamps, but I made it work. <laughs> You'll see here in a second. So I just took some of that wood glue and you want to use a good amount because this is going to be the only thing that holds your cutting board together but it will hold it very securely if you get enough on there. And yes, I put too much glue on there. You don't want the glue on the handle part, obviously. I just, you know, got a little carried away, but you're gonna end up sanding this here after it all dries, so I wasn't worried about it. And then if there's any wood glue that squishes out, make sure um, to just wipe that up good so that, um, you know, you don't have a mess on your hands later or have to sand like crazy to get the wood glue off. But here is where I realized my clamps were not long enough that I had already. <laughs> so I kind of was playing around with it, just trying to make it work. And it just wasn't holding it together like I wanted. So my husband figured out a way to get it to hold like this. So he took the two clamps that I had and kind of clamped those together. And it worked great. So longer clamps are on my Christmas list for sure. <laughs> So I let it dry overnight and then took off all the clamps. And as you can see here, it's super sturdy. Then I took it outside and I'm taking my sander. This one, I don't know the brand. I got it from um, a thrift store, I think like a year or two ago, and it still works great. So I just sanded the top and the edges. And I'm, as you can see here, kind of like rounding the edges. Not done yet, but... I didn't want it to be, um, you know, super straight edges. This is kind of up to you. However, farmhouse you want to go, you could ding it up. You could hit it with hammers. You can scratch it up, whatever you want. I wanted mine a more modern farmhouse. So I'm leaving like clean lines and stuff as much as I can, but I still wanted to go with a farmhouse look. So I am using this early American stain on my cutting board. And if you're using your cutting board for like actual food, you might want a better wood like maple or oak and also i don't know if you'd want to stain it i really don't think that's food safe so you'd want to use some sort of food safe like wax or um, sealer or something so then you want to take the remaining part of your thin piece of wood and stain it a little bit different color but something that complements the color that you already stained the cutting board i started mixing colors because i wasn't happy with it so I, I think I used hickory, um, early American, and then ebony, I think, just to make it a little bit darker than the actual cutting board. Then you want to measure your cutting board from the top. I measured mine five inches down and then five inches from the bottom. and then drew straight across so I would have a straight line to cut on. And then I took it back outside and made those cuts. This is where the two-toned effect is going to um, fit in. So I made the first cut and then adjusted my saw and I'm making the second cut from the top. 
and you want to be safe you want to wear safety glasses and use the um, the safety tools that come with your saw or you could easily just use a hand saw like this one then that darker strip the two thinner pieces you want to cut and this you want to cut the width of your cutting board and then obviously you're going to need to restain your edges there like the end pieces to match Then you're going to reassemble your cutting board. And this is where you put your darker pieces or lighter pieces, whatever color you made them. And it adds a little bit of length to the cutting board as well. And same thing as before, putting the cutting board together with um, a good amount of wood glue. And then again, I didn't have long enough clamps, so I kind of just I don't know, put a bunch of stuff together to hold it as best I could. But this is what I did to start with. And that's it. I let that dry. You can let it dry for overnight so that it's nice and secure. But this is it all finished. I love the rustic farmhouse or modern farmhouse look to it. Let me know what you guys think. And I think just for a couple dollars, probably under... 10 or under 15. It looks very similar to me to the Pottery Barn inspiration piece, but let me know what you think and let me know if you're going to make one. I think it will be super fun to decorate for holidays and stuff. And then there's my little trivet. I'm going to put my little decorative antique teapot on it. And these I think are super cool. I picked them or cut them from our zebra grass out in the yard and then just let them dry. This charcuterie board isn't meant for food or the dishwasher because we didn't use that type of stain or sealer or glue. So I do want to do one that is food safe coming up here on my channel. Project number 12. And this one we are using this I don't know if it was a dowel rod or some handle or something, but it was attached to another piece of wood in our garage, but I just thought I would use it. And then I'm also using these wood rounds. Um, I think I got them from Arteza a long time ago. And also I'm using this antique wax and I'm just going to um, kind of go over all of them to give them more of like a vintage old look. And all I did was brush it on and then used a paper towel to blend it out. And I'm making one of those, um, what are they called? Spools? Because I have like so many different like um, twine rolls and ropes and stuff like that that never stay neat <laughs> in my containers and stuff so I thought this would be super cute I saw a picture of um, somebody that had made spools on Pinterest and I wanted to make almost like a giant size of them <laughs> because it will help just keep my craft room more organized and it would look super cool so after I was done with that my husband drilled a hole in the dowel and oh it was freaking my cat out <laughs> and also in the wood rounds I would have done this myself but you know sometimes he likes to help so I asked him if he would help me with this and please don't do it this way I told him it wasn't a good way to do it <laughs> but he, jokingly he said he's an expert so while I was doing this the weather was getting really nasty actually my son was out with his friends and ended up coming home early because we were under a tornado warning and it just went on, it seemed like for hours. Um, so I was working on this as we were watching the weather and the news and stuff to know if we should go in the basement. But this is what it looks like, super rustic and I love it. This is probably one of my favorites that I've done today. 
And then I just took that um, twine roll that I was talking about that never stays together nice and neat and just wrapped it around. Oh, this is what I was talking about. Seemed like never ending sirens this night. <laughs> So then I just took the end of that twine or that rope and stuck it through there and it held it nice and neat. Project number 13. And then for this one, I just took some scrap pieces of wood and cut um, angles on the top part so that it looked like um, tags. Some of these videos are pretty old. So I'm just taking some chalk paint and then just some black acrylic paint on the other one and just doing a light coat kind of in the center and kind of sloppy. I saw a picture of something similar on Pinterest and fell in love with it. I just liked the idea of the giant um, tags. So then I'm just taking some sandpaper because the edges were pretty rough. Like I said, these were just scrap pieces of wood. And if you don't have wood, you could make this out of like the um, foam board from Dollar Tree. They just wouldn't be as um, like sturdy, I guess, but they would look just as cute. And I didn't measure where the hole should go. I just eyeballed it. Then after that, I'm taking these snowflakes from this book that I've showed you before. Um, I'm pretty sure it was from the Dollar Tree, but they're just like foamy little stickers, but I'm going to use them as stamps because I don't have snowflake stamps. And I just painted them with a little bit of chalk paint. I didn't want it to be too heavy because I wanted it to... Um, still show a little bit of the paint and the wood through and then I just positioned them how I wanted them and pushed down kind of like you would a stamp and I think that worked out perfectly just as rustic as I was wanting it to and then I'm going to do the same for the other two snowflakes And I will try to find the original inspiration picture that I saw on Pinterest and I will link it in the description box if I, if I can find it again. And then I just took some twine and then I'm just going to put it through the hole that we drilled. And I think that's awesome. I love how it looks. And there's my cat. He's trying to get to the heater vent that I'm kind of blocking. He loves sitting there in the winter. And then for the white tag, I'm just going to spell out the word, the words Winter Wonderland. I wanted to use bigger stencils, but I didn't have the correct size. The ones I had were way too big. So I'm just going to go with this. And I'm using a hairdryer in between each letter that I do. That way it's not smearing the paint all over. And I'm coating one of the snowflakes and putting it kind of off to the side. And then doing the same thing I did on the other one. Project number 14. Here is my inspiration I found on Wayfair. I thought the plant stand was a little bit too much. Um, so I thought we could create a really cool dupe. This is the wood round I'm going to use. It's in this video, how I originally made it onto this Home Depot bucket. Um, 
but I went to Home Depot. They didn't have the size I wanted, but they have them all over the place at Lowe's, depending on the size you want, you know, they vary in prices. Um, this is a really nice one. Like Lowe's, Home Depot, Hobby Lobby carries them in different sizes. This one's a pretty expensive one, but depending on the size, you can get them cheaper. You're also going to need some tea plates. I found these on, at our local hardware store, and I call this a dowel rod, but it's like a wood pole. I got it from Joanne Fabrics for, it was very inexpensive, like $2.99. Okay, so I'm just taking my dowel rod from Joanne Fabrics. And I'm just going to, hold on, I'm going to scoot you over. <laughs> I'm just going to draw a straight line on the top of it. And this is just for cutting purposes. So that you always know to have this facing up when you're cutting. And then I am just taking my little Stanley saw here. And I'm going to move it, because I'm going to do that legs angled, I'm going to move it over to, so it's at a 10 degree angle. I decided to do a 15 degree angle only because I cannot get my saw here to <laughs> stay at a 10 degree angle. Probably because I got it in a garage sale, it might have been why they were getting rid of it. But we're going to see if the 15 degree angle works. So I'm just going to cut the very end of this just to get the angle. And you want to make sure your line is facing up. So I ended up having to cut a big um, chunk of that uh, dowel rod off because um, the weight on this end was causing it to pinch on the blade so I couldn't move it very good. So I'm going to continue my little um, 15 degree cut here and then I will do the same on this side. And normally you would want to secure this onto like a work table or something which my husband and I are going to do very soon here. And then you have your angled cut. And that's going to be what sits on the ground and makes um, the legs angled so you want to do the same on this side because that's where it's going to attach to um, the stool top. So then I'm going to cut off about that much. I'll tell you the final um, measurements um, once I get this cut down. But again I have my line on the top that I drew and I'm just going to cut at that um, 15 degree angle. Not like that. <laughs> <laughs> you could also make your poles. They don't have to be slanted. They can be just, you know, straight. Okay, so we have our stool topper. This is the one I'm using. We have the legs that are cut on an angle. And then in a tutorial, I saw that they used this, like these um, T-plates, to attach the legs. This is probably not something you'd want to use if you're going to be putting any kind of heavy weight on here. Um, but I'm just using mine for a plant stand, so these should work perfectly. I'm just showing you this so you can see the size that I got. Sorry about the lighting. And what um, the steps you're going to have to do, like drill an eighth inch pilot hole, where you're going to put your screws, fasten screws in the material, blah, blah, blah. So, I just thought I would show you that before we get started. And you're going to have one extra when you're done, because we only did three legs, unless of course you did four. <laughs> and then when you place these, you want to make sure, because they, um, like the tutorial showed me, um, they're countersunk on one side and one side they're not. So you want that to be on the outside so that the screws sit flush. Um, also, another thing you're going to want to check um, my piece, my stool piece is um, on the thicker side, so the screws that came with the T-plate, those are going to work fine for me because they're not going to, they're not too long to where they're going to poke through the top, but you want to make sure that the screws you're using, um, if you have a thinner stool plate or a stool um, topper, that it's not going to go through. 
When you're pre-drilling, you want to make sure you're going in at the correct angle so that it's not all wonky when you try and attach it to the T-plate. And you want to make sure before you put the screw in um, that your legs are going to be all pointing out. Make sure it is nice and tight on there because you don't want your legs swiveling once they're on the stool. And this is what I'm using. It's super simple, so much better than a regular screwdriver. You just turn it basically in the direction you want it to screw in. Okay, so I had to turn it around. So these are countersunk, as I showed you before, and you want to do opposite. You want to do it this way so that when you screw the screw into the leg, it is flush because you don't want it sticking out because then it'll be like wobbly. So this is how you want it. And then when you get your legs in the position that you want, you can go ahead and divide your circle into three equal parts. Um, then just draw where you're going to um, put your screws. And then you want to then you want to go ahead and pre-drill those spots as well and then do that all the way around. And I will list all my tools in the description box if you're interested. So let me know if you are liking these projects so far. Um, I'm actually having a lot of fun working with wood. I love working with scrap wood and just creating new things. So let me know. And also always let me know what kind of videos you guys want to see or that you're interested in seeing on my channel. And this is the stool all done. I think it's a really close dupe to the original inspiration piece, but let me know what you guys think. It's a little bit more rustic, obviously, because I used a rustic piece of wood. And like I said, I will link that video that I, when I originally created that, um, up in the cards and also in the comment section, but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Project number 15. I don't know if you guys remember this. I'll put a link up in the corner there for the video where I made this. Um, but I'm going to actually repurpose it because I don't use it as a shelf anymore on the wall. So um, I'm going to turn it into something else. And we're going to be using some more scrap wood to make it. So my idea for the shelf is to um, kind of section it off. I'm going to cut some pieces like these corner pieces. Um, just to divide it and then I'll show you what I'm going to do with it. So I'm just going to kind of mark first where the edges are here and then um, just do a line here so that I can cut it to match these. that cut I still have this little bit because I couldn't get that angle on here um, that I'm going to trim off and I'm going to do three of them okay so I got them all cut they're a little wonky as you can tell but I'm not, not too concerned about it and see this one's shorter than this one but we're going for the rustic look right <laughs> so I'm just going to um, probably paint these first and then glue them in and then I'll show you what I do with this All right, so originally I was going to paint it um, the color of the shelf I might regret it, but I think I'm going to paint over it this um, 
what is it, vintage white color, only because I'm going to be putting um, plants in here, so I kind of want the colors and stuff like that to stand out. I don't know. Let me know what you think. I might end up regretting it, but we'll see. Okay, so these are all painted, and before it gets too dry, I'm just going to, just to stress the edges a little bit with um, a damp sponge, um, because I don't want it too distressed. You know, just kind of where it would naturally be. So I'm going to let that dry, clean it, well I'm going to clean up the edges and then let it dry and then I will show you, I'll probably put these back in and then I'll show you what I do. And these aren't necessary, I just thought they will be cute to hang little tags from, hopefully. If not, I can always just take them out. Okay, so for this next step. For mine, I'm going to put, um, I thought uh, herbs would be really pretty in here, like fresh ones. Um, so originally I wanted to use tags. I have um, smaller ones in this brand, but I can't find them. So I think these would be way too big. So I'm hoping these will be cute, like hanging from this. And I thought instead of like twine, I would use some of this raffia just because it looks a little bit more, um, I don't know, natural, I guess. We'll see what it looks like. I might change my mind. So I'm just going to label each one depending on, um, you know, what kind of herbs I put in here. I will show you that in just a second. And if you weren't hanging this off like an edge of a counter or something, instead of using the hooks, you could totally just put some twine or raffia around here and then attach it to the container. And I'm just gonna do these in like a, more of like a whitewash instead of like solid. I think I'm gonna write it, maybe I'll put it like this because I don't, I don't know if this will work with my sink, but. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna write it like this and then attach it to the jar. So I'm just filling my jars up a little bit. It, it depends on what the herb is, um, just so it keeps them alive and a little bit healthier for a little bit longer, or you can keep them in your fridge in a paper towel or a wet paper towel. But I wanted to do this because I thought it would be really pretty and bring some life to the kitchen in the winter. So I'm just tying the raffia around the jar. This is how I ended up doing it instead of hanging it from the hooks for now. And then I just did that for each herb that I have. And doing it this way makes the kitchen smell really good too. And these, I just learned, the green onions, that they will continue growing if you put them in a jar of water. So I thought that was awesome. So this is what it looks like all finished. I love it. I think it's so cute. I'm going to leave the hooks on for now until I decide, um, you know, 100% that this is where I want to keep it. What do you guys think? Um, originally I wanted to put it up here. I don't know if you guys can see with the, the light coming in, but I wanted to put it up here with the tags hanging down here, but then I wasn't sure if the faucet would be in the way. I don't know. I kind of like it where it's at for now, but I'll have to play around with it and see.
Number 16. My next scrap wood project, I'm going to be using this old shutter. I've had um, two of these for a really long time, just sitting in my craft rooms. So I thought I would turn it into something really cute and useful. So I'm going to take this apart because I'm only going to need one side. And then I'll show you the scrap pieces of wood that I'm going to be using. So I still have a bunch of these guys um, that I picked up on the side of the road last year. Um, they were in bundles. Um, so I'm just going to use these for my scrap pieces. And I'm going to cut probably maybe three high um, because I thought this would be like a really cute um, like plant holder. And then I also want, I wish this was a little bit thinner, but it will be like that. So I'm going to cut two of these and I'll be right back. Okay, I lied. I'm not going to use these for the sides because I think they're just a little bit too wide for what I want. So I'm going to use this scrap piece as my sides and just cut um, two for the sides and one for the bottom. All right, I have all my pieces cut and I still have a lot of scrap wood left. So there will be more projects if you're interested. Okay, so if you're wanting to actually put in like maybe real flowers in um, like a thinner vase or something, you would probably want to use this, the thickness of this, because then you can um, put nails in or screws where I'm just going to be putting like fake florals in. So I'm just relying on um, the wood glue to hold it. And we'll take care of the stuff that squishes out afterwards. And I'm also going to um, stain these or use, um, you know, some paint and water to make it so the sides match this color. But I'm going to do that after it's all attached. Might be easier to do it before you glue it, but I actually didn't think about that until right now, <laughs> but that's okay. It ended up turning out all right. And I think I'm going to space mine out. Can you see that? Is that at a good angle? I think I want to space them out like that. Kind of like a, um, I don't know, like a shiplap look. Maybe like that. There. So now I'm going to clamp it and then... I'll come back and clean that up and stain it. So now it's all dry and I'm removing the clamps. All right. And it's all one piece. I just need to stain the sides and the bottom now. And I'm just using just some acrylic paint and a wet sponge. I'll probably have to layer to get the same, oh, I might have to sand that, um, to get the same color as this and this. So I'll do a couple different colors. The paint didn't match perfectly, but I wasn't bothered by it too much. So this is it all finished. The wood tones are a little bit different, but if that bothers you, you could um, paint it to match all one color, but I think it's really cute and rustic looking. Scrap wood project number 17. I have these scrap pieces of wood that I think are really pretty actually, but I'm going to glue them together to make, you know, make it look like one solid piece because I don't have a piece as big as I need. Um, so hopefully this will work. I'm just gluing them together with the wood glue and then clamping them together just so that they stay tight until they're dry. And then wipe off the excess just like the other projects. And I let these dry for a few hours. All right, so we got it all. Oh. <laughs> so it's all nice and solid. And we cleaned up the glue. So, I mean, there's a little bit we could sand might do that um, before I stick the picture on. 
I love that wood though. I love the green. <laughs> All right, so this is the picture we're going to use, and this is for my husband. I'm making it for him to keep um, by his desk at work. So I'm just going to make sure the edges are going to be even, like the border all the way around. I'm just going to use some matte Mod Podge. Then I'm going to put some on the back of the picture. Okay, now I'm going to put some on top. So it seemed to work out really, really good. I mean, there's a couple wrinkles. Um, I'm going to put another coat on. Um, obviously, that won't help the wrinkles, but, <laughs> but I'm really happy with how it turned out. And I'm just going to sand down the edges now a little bit, make them a little bit um, rounder and smoother. And then I'll probably just seal in the whole thing with Mod Podge. Okay, so I'm going to do one more coat now that it's all sanded and then seal up the edges too. Here it is all finished. Let me know what you guys think. I absolutely love it, probably because it was my Bella girl. There are some lines in it from the wood, but I'm not too upset about that. Project 18. All right, and for our wood project, I am using this wood round. Um, I had um, used it in a past video and I took off um, the base of it but I wanted to use it with this basket because I've had this for quite some time and I thought it would be cute as a 99 cents <laughs> from Goodwill um, I thought it would be cute as like a plant stand so I'm going to try and make that work and I wanted to keep the basket this color so um, I think I'm just going to paint this um, probably that same antique white because I don't know if I can match this. I'm sorry, I don't know what happened to that clip, but I um, didn't think I could match the wood topper with the color of the basket, so that's why I wanted to paint it um, the antique white. I thought it would look really pretty too and really make any plant that I put on there stand out with the bright green against the white. Alright, there's the basket, and this is all painted, kind of rustically. Um, for now, I'm just going to use some wood glue on here, and then I would like to get some sort of um, bracket or something to maybe um, attach from the inside to the um, wood round. But I don't have that right now, so this is what I'm using. I do like the contrast between the, the antique white and then this wood color. I think it's really pretty. I wanted to show you that deer finally stood up. I think he's hurting. His, he keeps favoring his right leg, but I thought he was really pretty. So I wanted to show you. And finally, here it is all finished. Let me know what you guys think of this type of video. Give me a thumbs up if you like this type of content with like scrap wood projects. Um, that way I know to keep going with them. Leave me ideas in the comments for new video ideas that you would like to see. And our final one, project 19.
This is something that probably should have been thrown in the trash, but it was a swing that my kids used to swing on that we had attached to um, our really big oak tree in the back, but that ended up um, actually dying and falling, which was really sad, <laughs> but I kept the swings just because those were some really sweet memories, and I knew I could do something with it, but I've had it for quite a long time just floating around in the garage, so I cleaned it up sanded it off and I'm going to add some of this antique wax. I just thought this had really cool lines to it and it meant something to me. Might not mean something to somebody else and they might look at it and just be like why do you have that chunk of wood? <laughs> but I thought it would be really pretty because I've seen like um, chunks of wood in antique stores and stuff and it's like, well, what is that used for? But you could use it for displaying anything kind of like I did here. I thought it was really pretty. I love the color and I just, I don't know, I smile when I look at it because it reminds me of my kids when they used to swing on it. So let me know, do you guys have anything floating around the house that's similar that something that somebody might just look at and be like, why did you keep that? But I don't know, you wanna turn it into something cool so you can see it every day. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out part number one. I will have that linked below. Thank you guys so, so much for all your love and support. I'm sending you love and hugs and I'll see you next time. Bye.